Hi, it's Anna Mason, and in this video I'm going to show you how I painted these lemons in a looser, more illustrative style than I usually paint in. Whilst the result is different, you're going to be amazed at how similar the process is, and how many of the same observation and colour mixing skills are used, even though the brushwork is a little less controlled. I used a photo to refer to throughout the painting. And to create the different look, I used a couple of extra bits of equipment to normal. You're going to need a fine tip waterproof pen in either black or dark grey. This is a 0.5mm fine tip from Uni. You're going to need a larger brush. This is a number 8 pointed round synthetic brush from Rosemary & Co. I'm also going to use one of their mop brushes for some flicking of some paint at the end. I'm using my hot pressed paper sketchbook, but cold pressed paper would work fine for this too. The drawing I created was freehand and I wasn't worried about accuracy, I just wanted to fill the space in my sketchbook nicely. And as I planned to ink over the top of my pencil, I wasn't concerned about the pencil lines being too dark. The painting process began in my usual way, applying the lightest version of each colour to the different colour areas, beginning with the pale grey for the flower. The main difference to this process was that I used the size 8 brush which is bigger than what I'd normally use. I then painted a watery pale version of the yellows, beginning with the pollen to the centre of the flower, then the lemon skin, working up and down the lemon to help create the sense of its rounded form, and sippling with my brush a bit to start to create the bumpy texture. The grey paint on the flower wasn't dry when I'd applied the yellow, so it had now bled into the grey too much, but as it hadn't dried, that was no problem as I could lift it off with my finger. Next, I painted the pale greens to the leaves, changing the mix from a more blue-green where there were highlights, to a more yellow version where I could see that hue. As usual, I then let this first layer of paint totally dry off, and then focused on painting the darkest tones to each of the colour areas. I began with a dark yellow, adding some crimson to the yellow paint and keeping the mix quite thick. What you're doing here is really looking at the broadest biggest patches of colour. So it's almost like we're taking our glasses off or we're walking to the other side of the room and we're looking for the bigger shapes and bigger patches of colour. I stippled as I applied this into those darkest shapes to help create some texture. Then watered the mix down a little to paint the mid-tone areas, leaving gaps to the original layer for the lightest areas. Then I added a hint of green to the mix for the shadow areas of the lemon where I could see that different colour. Next I did the same thing to the leaves, applying the darkest tone shapes of colour I could see there, but I was working a lot faster and less precisely than I would when working realistically. I was looking to get the shapes generally in the same area, not exactly. I was approximating what I could see and not taking a lot of time to locate the shapes exactly where they were in the photo. After all, my drawing wasn't accurate anyway. I then made a lighter, more yellow mix to apply to the mid-tones. Again, these bled a bit into the darker colour which wasn't fully dry, but I welcomed the natural blending that happened as a result. Crucially, the layer underneath was dry, so the lightest shapes were preserved wherever I left gaps. I then used a smaller brush for the stem, and for some darker details to the flower which was fully dry by now. This next bit was really enjoyable. With the paper dry I took my waterproof pen and went over my drawing to emphasise it and create a less realistic, more illustrative sort of look. I find this works best done over the top of some of the paint because it shows up more than if you paint over the top of it. That ink work made the picture darker overall, so now was a good time to assess the tonal range of the painting and darken up the different colour areas as needed. I used a size 5 brush to work into the dark greens some more with a thicker darker mix, before adjusting the lighter greens with a watery wash. And then darkening the yellows again, as well as adding more detail with further stippling with the brush. Next, I used the smaller size 3 brush to darken parts of the petals a little bit more with a pale beige coloured mix. Now, if you know me, you'll know that I just love working with details, so I added some at this stage, albeit in a slightly looser way than I would if I were aiming for realism. I added details on the lemon, including the shadow under the petal, and a few brown details on the stem, as well as on the stamens. 
Next, with the leaves and lemon pretty dry, I took a step back and looked for any areas I felt needed darkening when I compared my painting to the reference photo and added another layer to those bits now, in the leaves and in the lemon. With it looking right tonally, it was time for the embellishments. I used the mop brush, loading it up and using my finger to flick some of the colours I'd been working with across the picture and onto the white paper. A lot of fun. Then, with the picture dry, I used the ink again to work over the previous ink and darken it up in a few places where it had been obscured by the paint. Then I made a few final adjustments, brightening and darkening areas I felt needed it with a three brush and further layers of paint. Then darkening with a larger brush to a few places on the lemon to bring it back in balance. Before using one of my tiny brushes to add a final detail to the flower centre, I just couldn't resist. A full video class of this lemon is available now in my online school. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and then hop on over to animationart.com where you can take a full length video class for free and find masses of resources to help you pick up your brush and paint the way you've always wanted to. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon to help you create more watercolours with WOW.